This video contains homophobia and some discussion on body parts and the things body parts do. Properly warned ye be, says I. I'd like to start today's episode with an anecdote. In the early 2000s, my family and I had Disneyland year passes, and as such, we went often. One night after Fantasmic had end, we were exiting New Orleans Square through Adventureland when lo and behold, we ran into my sister's teacher. We stopped to chat for a little bit and he went off about how the Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey and Fantasmic was blasphemous and how that Disney as a whole was evil. While we were standing in the walkway above the line for Pirates of the Caribbean in Disneyland. Owned by Disney. He, however, is not an anomaly. There are, in fact, many Christians that hate Disney. Disney is a mastermind when it comes to creating seemingly family-friendly products. Whether it's a film or a cartoon or an amusement park, Disney has convinced the masses that it's simply good, clean fun. But at a closer examination, something more sinister is underneath that innocent persona. There are also many Christians that love Disney. So I like to collect Disney stuff, as you can see, Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, Pinocchio. You know, when I was a little kid, I used to watch The Wonderful World of Disney on television. Then they later changed it to The Wonderful World of Color. So one day, Walt Disney comes on the TV screen and he says, I'm opening up an amusement park called Disneyland. Wow, he really screwed up that timeline. I'd imagine the number that love Disney are probably higher than hate. I have no numbers on that. God poured his wrath on his son that day so that we could be made clean. But God made a way so man is welcome. Jesus Christ would come and die. Today, I want to talk about why some fundamentalists despise Disney. Well, the reality is they're not in line. It's not a Christian organization. It's a secular organization, and it is increasingly being run by secular people who have a secular agenda, and that is corporate America everywhere, isn't it? The Bible takes a weird stance on magic and divination. Sometimes it's perfectly fine because God, and other times it's blasphemous. If I may, I am going to read some verses condemning magic in the Bible. And for the record, I am using King James Version. Um... It's public domain, and I don't have to hear, oh, you're not using the real translation. And make sure you don't study that in NIV, because NIV a lot of times takes out a lot of wording and stuff. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards, to go a-whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul, and will cut him off from among his people. Micah 5.12 and I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 through 14. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of the times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, that the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before you. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For those nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times, and unto diviners, but as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. And today we are visited by Miss Quincy. She's the one bugging me today. Love you, gal. <laughs> Bugging is the word I used just because I couldn't think of anything better. Though the Bible does still endorse some use of magic and divination. Your followers want a glass of wine, but all you have is water? Well, if you're the amazing Jesus, no problem. Water into wine, it's a miracle. John 2.11. Thank you. Daniel chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore Daniel went in unto Orioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will shew unto the king the interpretation. Exodus chapter 7, verse 20. And Moses and Aaron did so, and as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod, and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. Genesis chapter 41, verses 15 and 16. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. 
and I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. That last verse gives an easy out that it's not magic, it's God. For anybody making that argument, explain to me how that's not using God as a familiar. A friend on the other side, so to say. I got friends on the other side. He's got friends on the other side. Nevertheless, as a child, I was not allowed to read Harry Potter, play Dungeons and Dragons, and I was terrified that if my mother saw me playing Kingdom Hearts and she saw that it had a magic system, that I wouldn't be able to play Kingdom Hearts anymore. Something like this actually happened to a friend of mine at church. He was playing Final Fantasy X, and his mother saw that it had an Aeon system, and she connected it to Aeons in Aleister Crowley's Thelema. Thelema? I don't know how to pronounce it. So it might not come as a surprise that there are those that view the magic in Disney as evil. So what do these similarities between Elsa and Jesus mean? I'm of the opinion that these similarities serve the purpose of subconsciously perverting the character of Jesus in the minds of young viewers. She walked on water, was transfigured, died and came back to life, resurrected the dead, and is both a spirit and a person. But in addition to that, she is involved in witchcraft by virtue of her relationship with the four elemental spirits, and she is identified as the fifth spirit herself, which is basically Satan. Obviously, the magic done by the evil characters is evil, but so is the magic done by the good characters. I think, like, the movie Princess and the Frog has a very dark, um storyline with the whole voodoo stuff and it's never made clear that like voodoo is bad and wrong because although there's a bad voodoo guy there's also this really old lady who does voodoo and she's a good who lady represents the, the good yeah, kind of the good the good the voodoo and i love the flack that sorcerer's apprentice mickey gets because i wouldn't even say he's the worst thing in fantasia fantasia shows evolution finally after about a billion years Certain fish, more ambitious than the rest, crawled up on land and became the first amphibians. Harpy boobies and deities from pagan religions. That would be worse things from their perspectives. And I want to let my kid watch Hercules because there's that, like... You mean Huncules? Oh my goodness. Of course, they would have actually had to have seen Fantasia to be upset about those things, and nobody's seen Fantasia. I really don't plan on making this a channel about religion, at least not solely. It's just a topic that I would like to broach from time to time. But then Answers in Genesis had to go and release this video, how Disney is subtly poisoning our children. Disney is a fisher of men, it's a fisher of children, fisher of teenagers, fisher of all people to try to reel them in into basically anti-biblical worldview. Now it's done with a pretty picture, engaging movies, good technology, engaging visuals with the movies and soundtracks and so forth, but it's still poison at the core because it's anti-biblical. They're arguing that Disney under CEO Bob Chapek is just super duper queer friendly and is poisoning your children. So just know right off the bat that he, the CEO, and the leadership of Disney, they want to push for this LGBTQ agenda. They think this is what a more inclusive world would look like, and they're on board with that revolution. So they're pushing for that change within what they are thinking and producing within their company. And to be honest, I am a little conflicted about this. On one hand, it is such flagrant disregard for the truth that it's infuriating. But on the other hand, Bob Chapek is making enemies left and right, and I, you love to see it. In 2022, the state of Florida would pass... Okay, and I am going to have to read it here. CSCSHB 1557, Parental Rights and Education, or as it's more commonly known, the Don't Say Gay Bill. It is called this because it prohibits sexual orientation and gender identities to be taught in classes from kindergarten through third grade. The bill also prohibits the school from withholding information from the parents, be that about school events or the child's well-being. There is a provision that allows school districts to make a rule that if they believe the child might be endangered from telling a parent something, that they could withhold it. But that is not the default. A district has to put that rule in place. Right after this paragraph says that they can't put it in place. This bill just has some terrible wording. Now, look, I'm going to link it down below. You can read it for yourself. Disney would remain silent on the subject while funding those that would push it forward. 
In the last two years, it's given nearly $300,000 to DeSantis and the legislators that voted for this bill. I don't think they were funding them because they were pushing it forward. It's just that usually conservative politicians are more corporation friendly. And people found out about that. After growing pressure, Bob Chapek would release a letter saying, we are just super progressive. Look at Black Panther. Putting out a statement defending Disney's silence on the bill and listing a bunch of Disney projects like Encanto, Black Panther, Modern Family, and Summer of Soul, saying these and all of our diverse stories are our corporate statements and they are more powerful than any tweet or lobbying effort. And this is the thing that set off Answers in Genesis. They saw it as admission that Disney was pushing the gay agenda. After that conversation, he sent out an email, a memo to all the employees of Disney talking about why they have not done that, where they stand and what they're actually trying to do. And the email is very, very enlightening to what they think, believe and what they're actually trying to do with their product. Disney just made a flowery apology so that they could go back to ignoring it. Or that seemed to be the case. Now Bob Chapek is saying he's going to try his best to repeal the don't say gay bill. I'll believe it when I see it, just like the Princess and the Frog rework of Splash Mountain. Although now that Bob Chapek has said that, um, it looks like Disney World might be losing... Disney World is its own municipality, more or less. And Florida is saying, oh, since you're going woke, we might take that away. He's talking about Florida House Republican Spencer Roach, who tweeted legislators have held two meetings in the past week to discuss repealing the 1967 Reedy Creek Improvement Act. So, um, yeah, that just gives Disney even more reason. Okay, maybe we shouldn't do that. The claim that Disney is pushing the gay agenda is nothing new, though. Disney's agenda is a Christian bashing, family bashing, pro-homosexual agenda. For decades now, Disney Park fans have been putting on gay days at the Disney parks around the world. They are not organized by Disney by any means, but they are allowed. I mean, why wouldn't they allow them? A paying customer is a paying customer, and Disney loves that money. Doesn't keep the evangelicals from blaming them. So we at Citizen Go are asking you to join with us. Sign our petition. Let's send a message to the Walt Disney Company that we do not want LGBT ideology. We do not want the rainbow flag within the Walt Disneyland parks. And they're going to have their magical gay pride parade. To their Baphomet God. You need to repent. God didn't give you a vagina to put a tongue on it. That's wicked. Hell yeah, he did. That's perverted. Yeah. He gave you a vagina to have children. You're wicked. You're perverted. You know what is ordained by Disney? The annual candlelight procession, which tells the story of Christmas. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for we for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Of course, any time Disney does give the tiniest amount of attention to queer identities, that sets the fundamentalists off. Today, we're talking about a subject that just made me pretty angry earlier, honestly. Well, it's been making me angry this week when I think about it. So, something I've had to pray about, obviously, but we're talking about the show called The Owl House on Disney Channel. So this show has literally like witchcraft and bisexuality and rebelliousness. And my thought is like, you can't battle demons without Jesus. So that's just what I'm saying. According to Pixar employees, they were not allowed to make anything explicitly queer in the movie Turning Red. The best we got was this face, sis. These faces. Movie still got a lot of heat from conservative groups, which, um, ridiculous. That movie was delightful. <laughs> Why the heck would I have Disney tell my kid about puberty? I want it. This got pretty feisty, pretty fiery. Let us know <laughs> in the comment section. Have you seen Turning Red? Do you plan to see it? What have you been hearing about it? Um, a, a movie that deals with, well, this is specifically about a girl going through puberty. I don't know who is it. So this is a, a Pixar movie specifically for 12 and 13 year old girls. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But look, I haven't seen the movie. I don't plan on seeing it. Um, I've heard enough just from this. 
that uh, I, I'm not, my kids aren't going to watch it? Really, it's giving like an Eastern perspective. And, and so the problem, though, I have is that, number one, it's a coming of age piece. And so it's essentially about a girl experiencing, you know, her monthly cycle. And then as a result of that, there's all this spiritual connection to, you know, ancestral communication, which is communication with the dead. And then how many first gay characters has Disney had as, you know, just a little bit of bait, like, oh, see, we love the gay people. But then how many characters are so overtly queer that it can't be edited out for international release? And it wasn't until 2018 that Disney actually started a Pride line. There was some Pride merch before that, but it was not its own line. And the line is actually kind of vague. It's not even all that overtly Pride. It's not the Pride collection. It's the Rainbow Collection. Disney just tries so hard to be neutral on these topics. And history, much like Star Wars, rhymes. In 1977, Dade County of Florida would outlaw discrimination based on sexual orientation. After two and a half hours of heated arguments sprinkled with amens and boos, the commission voted five to three in favor of the ordinance. Opponents shouted recall threats at the commissioners, while proponents smiled in victory. In 1977, Dade County of Florida would rescind that bill. What is your reaction to the Dade County vote? Well, I'm certainly disappointed. Uh, I spent a week in Dade County, oh, and the vote really didn't surprise me after I went down and saw the tenure of the campaign, and especially this whole issue of child molestation um, that was thrown up by the Save Our Children forces over and over again. Disney said nothing. In all fairness, Disney is not in Dade County, but they do have a lot of sway in Florida, if they wanted to have their voices known, they could have, you know, if they actually objected. At this time, they were also partnered with the Florida Citrus Commission, now known as Florida's Organic. I must correct myself. It is actually Florida's Natural. Ever wondered why there was Donald Duck on some orange juices? That's why. In the 1970s, they would introduce a new character called the Orange Bird. He would appear in FCC advertisements and would appear at Walt Disney World as a walk-around character. And as stated in his theme song, his little beak can't peep a squeak, but he communicates with pictures appearing above his head in orange smoke. He thinks beautiful orange pictures and beautiful orange words, though his little beak can't even peep a squeak. All the thoughts he ever spoke appear in orange smoke. That's what makes the orange bird unique. Oh yeah, he had a theme song. And his theme song and the album based around him was performed by Anita Bryant. And uh, uh, every... Oh, oh, oh. Hey, let's pray for him right now. Anita, right now. let's pray. Anita, why don't you pray? That's all right. Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity of coming to Des Moines. And Father, I want to ask that you forgive him. That we love him. And that we love him. And that we're praying for him to be delivered from his deviant lifestyle, Father. Anita Bryant would work as spokesperson for the FCC from the late 60s through 1979. She would also go on to become the president of Save Our Children Incorporated, the movement that repealed that law. Despite this, Disney and the FCC continued working with her through 1979. And it was the FCC that hired Miss Bryant, not Disney, but they could have put pressure on their business partner, and they didn't, despite the building outcry against Miss Bryant. Did you hear the terrible news from down in the orange groves? No. Yeah, I heard that. Read, read the question. All right. I'll tell you about it. <laughs> Depress me. I don't want to hear it. They just discovered that drinking orange juice makes you blank. Well, I originally started out and I thought it makes you look like Anita Bryant. And then I thought, well, that won't be happy, so how about makes you gay? Gay! I refuse to answer questions about Anita Bryant. <laughs> well, that's the saying, isn't it? A gay without sunshine. And remember, breakfast without orange juice is like a day without sunshine. I said look and think like Anita Bryant. Look and think like Anita Bryant. If you'd like to learn more on the outcry against Miss Bryant, I highly suggest a Dream Sounds video on the subject. Bob Iger and now Bob Chapek have not been supportive of queer identities at Disney. And what we do get just acts as proof to the fundamentalists that Disney is indoctrinating our kids.
I just don't think it's necessary for my kid to have an imagination, to be able to dream, to learn how to discern what's good and bad, to that they have to watch Disney mm-hmm. to be able to figure that stuff out or and have those that was things. The- Which, I mean, yeah, they've always been doing that, but it's indoctrination that they don't like. When it was Johnny Appleseed singing, the Lord's been good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the apple trees, the things I need, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're fine with that. The Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord. For giving me the things I need, the sun and rain and an apple seed, yes, he's been good to me. We are going to sing a prayer together, and if you would like to do it with me, that would be wonderful. Oh, the Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, like the sun and the rain and the apple seed, the Lord is good to me. Me. The Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and rain and an apple seed. Yes, he's been good to me. <laughs> oh, the Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. <laughs> But two moms hugging a kid in Toy Story 4 is just too far over the line. The group says the scene is subtle in order to desensitize children, but it is obvious that the child has two mothers and they are parenting together. As much as they want to cry that they're pushing the gay agenda, it's simply not true. Disney does not want to enforce change. If they could just have things stay the same, they'd be happy. And if they could profit off of whatever change has already happened without causing further change, they're even happier with that because money. Oh, and Disney, pay your employees a livable wage. It is staggering how many Disney cast members live in motels. All right, well, since filming this video, some things have happened. Video communication from inside the company has come out where executives say that they are in fact pushing the gay agenda. Not the highest ups, not somebody that's made enough impact. And I actually, there's that part of me that's like, this wasn't leaked. This was meant to be made public. So yeah, I'm skeptical about, you know, what's being reported there. And now Disney in their fireworks show, instead of saying, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is now going to be saying, welcome dreamers, which, um, well, that set some people off. And now some Republicans are looking at Disney saying, hey, Mickey Mouse's copyright's coming up soon. Be a shame if you lost that. And that's the end of today's video. I just wanted to make this one because, again, the Answers in Genesis video was just so asinine. It was just like, no. I wish I could say Disney was super gay friendly, but it's not. It is so far from being that. Hopefully next time we won't be talking about religion again, but I do not make that promise. I thank you for joining me today, and if it's not too much to ask, I ask that you like, comment, and subscribe, and take care. Remember that you are valid. Bye-bye. Well, excuse me for living, Anita Bryant.